first of all, my name is Omoshola Drojai. I'm the chairman of Adenu Ogunsanya CDA, which comprises Adenu Ogunsanya Street and its four closes. Uh, basically, I've been on the street for 52 years. So you can say I'm like the ballet, <laughs> in quotes. Um, we are used to this kind of thing, but this has never happened in this dimension before. Being that this is the year 2020, um, we've had several protests in Nigeria with uh, respect to Lagos and then in respect to Suruleri and then to Adenu Ogunsoya because this is the economic capital of Suruleri. This is virtually the number one and number two street on Suruleri. So we don't have locked gates here. Only the CDAs that are off have locked gates and maybe our foreclosures. So whenever anything happens, we are the most vulnerable. We are exposed. And because it's the economic nerve center, we have what we call, not hoodlums, as everybody is saying in the media and on the internet, which has been interneticized. But this is mob. And when you see mob, it's a sign of revolution and revolt of the masses of the people. Now, this action was precipitated basically by what happened and transpired at Leki because all you two on the internet. So the minute that thing happened, a backlash of what happened there is what you see here on the streets here. I mean, these streets have never been so littered like this with waste. You know, we just finished our, the first uh, project we did as a CDA, which is the, uh, the silting and the evacuation of all our drainages. Adenio Gusa is 1.0 kilometer, length and breadth. The second project was uh, the marking, lane marking, and then they were supposed to come and paint the medians before they had end charge started. So basically what happened that day was, I began to notice, I was not even in the area I went out, and I began to notice that what was happening, people were calling me. So I had to run, ba run back to the streets, and I discovered that we had foreign people people who are not of through Larry breed. And that was when I knew there was something was about to happen. So the next thing we noticed was they started planting tires at different intervals along the stretch of the road. And then when it got to about 536, I was out with a few residents and I was given an investigative insight into what we might expect. And then at about six, I just told everybody, just go inside. Because the faces I'm seeing are very unkind. This is mob faces. You know, there, there are parameters and indexes and indices you can use to identify people who are called mob. Or you call, can call them the mobians or mobsters. Of course, they came in with shotguns, cutlasses, all kinds of unimaginable instruments. And the next thing we knew was they lit bonfires all across the street. And the next thing, we just started seeing that they were looting. And I was observing and trying to come out, but I was seeing weapons. And when you see the mob, the mob does not answer to policemen, neither to Hamis or to anything. You can't defeat a mob. You can only use wisdom, psychology, tactics, and sociology to try and admonish and neutralize them. But if you come with force, you, they will meet force with force. And once they overpower you, that's the end. So the looting started at about uh, maybe 7 o'clock till about 4 in the morning. It was so brazen and defiant. And of course, there was bandwagon effect that followed it. And what you have today is the whole street is damp, as you can see. Everywhere is quiet. Everywhere is quiet. It's so quiet. And... The, the, the economic loss to this great institution, which began from the inception of the state, is unimaginable. It's unimaginable. It cannot be fathomed. Of course, for public consumption, when you see a mob in action, listen to what they are saying. From what I could grasp, what they were saying vociferously was that, look, Everybody's a thief in Nigeria. All of us are thieves in Nigeria. 
So they came to take their own. That is for their own mind, though. Sure you understand. That is for their own mind. But they were saying this are tax money. That was what I heard them saying. And I was like, ah, education is a good thing here. It's good to read. Probably if they were better educated. And that's why government should be for the masses. The masses are the mob. And from history of all revolutions, academically, and even from researches, revolution starts with the mob, not with those who are okay. So it's a big lesson for us. We have to learn what we have learned from the Christ, the agonies, the pains, the economic uh, 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 sufferings of these masses. And then look at what we can do to alleviate and give them uh, uh, leverage to be able to at least to achieve their own Nigerian vision and dream in the context of legality, which the president mentioned in his speech yesterday. So, but who is going to pay the assets and the investment that has been lost by these owners? Not all of them made their money from government now. Some are hard end. Some wealth are from family background. And when we talk about wealth, it is one person that will suffer, and then the others will enjoy. Let's do a research. Look at the streets. Look at the sociology of the streets. Do you see any mob now? They are at home resting. Who knows when next they are going to come out? It's not easy. But we all are going through it. Even the rich also cry. Not everybody living at Adero Busa is a rich man. This is a working class area now. Fine, there is investment here. But most of these investments are investment capital borrowed from venture capitalists. How do they recoup? Their interest to be paid on them. Because this is trading, it's not manufacturing. And the money is recycled. Everybody gains commission on top. So this is what I want the government and the masses to think and reason along this path, these pathways. If they had been rationable enough, we wouldn't have had all this. The social media is so wealthy and powerful. Every riffraff on the streets, who is not a riffraff, who is a masses, as an android. And it's not immune to social media information. They can feed him and propagandize his minds. What it will take you to uh, disabuse his mind, it will cost you more than what it will take to propagandize his mind against any set of society. So right now, what we have here that has happened here, and probably exponentially all over the nation, is the masses, who in revolution is called mob. Go and do your study of this. Go on the internet. They told their business. Is the government has to quickly run out programs, specifically not for the interest of anybody, but for the masses, to tame their excesses. They are not having some so much. What are they asking for? One, three square meals. Not 101, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, over here. You know all the those feeding regime. They want to be able to eat three square meals, morning, afternoon, evening, and have something in their fridge. Then number two, they want basic electricity with reasonable economic charges that they can afford. Then number three, good pipe bomb water. What every cosmopolitan city experiences, that is what they are asking for. And Lagos State has the economic resources and power to do all these things. And they know that through internet. And that's why you see all this. So they had as uh, as answers group have their own cries and pain. Then the masses of the people who are the mob also have their own demands also in the ad as answers thing. So basically, what we're having is as answers came out, then other groups of the society across the sociological strata. I'm talking about Lagos State too. As an index case. And I saw under the graduates. And what did I see? So this thing is giving birth to a lot of things. It's giving birth to a lot of things. So everybody is clueless as to how it is to be resolved. Basically, the educated class are brainstorming. And for some, it's a revolution. 
but I call it ash corruption revolution because the people who are doing this we are saying mumbling it out. Everybody is a thief in Nigeria. Everybody is corrupt, which is for their own mind. Because we have people that are not stealing, and we have those who are looting. So that is their own thought and perspective. But right now, what we have is a state of anarchy. So how do we return back to the civil state? And of course, for Lagos Island, how do we get the staff of office of the Oba of Lagos back? Because that staff, I've interviewed, I, I, I'm a prince of Lagos now. I'm from the Lagos royal family. I've discussed with several people. And everybody said, that guy with that staff is dangerous. I want to appeal to you, you who took that staff on the internet and that everybody has seen. That thing has spiritual implications. It has spiritual implications. So I want to plead with you, return the staff back to where it belongs. People went into the palace to pick food. Why must you go for the staff of office? As a billionaire, you. So I want to plead with you, wherever you are, return the staff back. It won't do you any good. Please, my name is Omoshola Drojai. I'm also a prince of Lagos, and I'm an indigenous of Lagos. So I want to plead with you, return staff here, brother, because they do any good. It won't do you any good, return it back. And it will never sell you in the future. When all these things are over, and the society gets back to a sane state, and civil order, and law, democracy, and legality, you will be found wanting. So I plead with you, go and restore it back. And then for everybody who has been concerned for the harbor of Lagos, I want to plead with you, we have a system in place. Even before the British came, and that is the white card chiefs of Lagos, you have the chief Ashogbon of Lagos there, you have Olorogun Adodo, the Olori Oloye, you have other white card chiefs, Olorogun Atebo is there. I want to plead with you, anything that has to do with ownership institution, regulation, control, and every other thing. You know the palaces of the white cap chiefs of Lagos. Please go to the palace, see the white cap chiefs. They are the most accessible of all peoples in Lagos. Especially Ashobo of Lagos, who is the traditional minister of defense and the chief of defense staff. You need to go and meet him. That's the chief of staff, traditional chief of staff to the upper of Lagos. So please, go to look for the Ashogbon Palace. Go and see Ashogbon. They will know how to call the other white cap chiefs. And then to put things back in its position. And then whatever are your grievances, tender them before the white cap chiefs of Lagos. They know how to go about all these things. They are the custodians of the history, the culture, the tradition, and the native laws of Lagos State. They stabilize the politicians. And I want to tell you, quote me anywhere, my name is Omoshola Jojai. The reason why Nigeria is going through more, more, the problem was there, precedentially. The reason why they are going through this more is that they expunged the role of traditional rulers out of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I'm not speaking dumbly, I've done my research, both intelligently and spiritually and factually. From the moment we expunged them out, that was the end. An indicator is what that young man went to do to pick up the chief of staff of a reigning hubba. You can't make yourself up, it takes people to make you hubba. So please, I will appeal again to the young man. Because and I want you to know, please, for everyone in Lagos, both residents, citizens, visitors, and indigenous alike, Lagos had existed before the coming of the British colonial rulers. It had existed. It was a royal battle between two cousins, Oba Kosoko and Oba Kito, that brought in the incursion of the British. And it was 100 years after Lagos had been in existence. 
that the Western Nigeria came into existence. So what basically is happening is, please, Lagos is a home for all. It had been, it is still is, and it will always be. And what guides us in Lagos is the principles. What are the principles? The native law, traditions, and customs, which are vested in the white cap chiefs. The meaning of white caps, very simple, is the custodian of the history, the culture, the tradition, and the people of Lagos. They were also part of government then. Chief Obani Koro was part of the Lagos, uh, Lagos City Council. We had them there. But the moment the traditional system was expunged out of the constitution, that was when the problem of Nigeria multiplied the more. The only thing that can solve this problem, because all wars that have been fought and all revolution, they still go back to the table and sit down. So, but everybody has had them. Fadenu Ogunson Yasidiye, this is the worst period in our history since 1965. I've been here 52 years. And I've been on the streets whilst this was going on. But I had to move back because you can't stand or resist a mob. So when you see mob, it's revolution. So that's all I can say. Lagos is a praying city state. Before, during, and after the British came and post independence. We pray so much in Lagos. It's a praying state. We are the hub of most churches in Lagos. So virtually, as you see this street now, some people are in prayers. Those who are not fortunate to be on the street like, like I am. You know, as a chairman of the community, even my escorts are inside. But I believe they watch this program when you, when you hear it and post it. I'm not afraid of anybody because my hands are clean. I'm not afraid. So basically what is happening is the mob thing you talk about or the component of Surile boys in the midst of mob. That's why I called it mob. You have to do a forensic analysis to be able to single them out and say this one is Surile boy. A mob is a mob. And who makes up the mobs? The mob, the masses of the people. But Ash Enstars, I did my study, critical evaluation and study of Ash Enstars people. Obasan just said something. He did a seminar in somewhere in East Africa. He said Nigeria produces 100,000 graduates every year. Now, let's take a period of five years, 500,000 graduates. A graduate from any university, let's take uh, Unilag as an index case. There's no amount of armed forces you put before him that can defeat him. You know why? Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. He is best informed. He will know how to approach the army coming, the mighty army coming. And he will not defeat them, but will make them see reason. Of course, Nigerian army are reasonable people. We have educated class people amongst them. But basically, the, the majority, in fact, all these people you call as answers, I've did my forensic analysis, both on the internet and in real life. And I discovered that most of these people are graduates, highly educated. You have chemical engineers there, you have lawyers, you have doctors, you have all, all broad spectrum of engineers. It's a cross-sectional a, a, a cross representation of all courses we do in university. You have BSc, you have MSc, you have MPhil, you have PhD, you have postdoctoral. So tell me, how do you win those kind of people? Those are the headgates of the society. The, 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 only way go, the only thing government can do is energy power people with Joko Kosin got them as you. I go for land work, if I can't sing para, and my log bear on Joko ni, and then my bone contours and my son Because you are in government today, tomorrow you will be out. Government doesn't, it abhors vacuum. It is a continuous. You have to plead with them. It's the essence of democracy. If you don't plead with them, this thing will continue. After you kill them, they'll go back on the streets. So if we know afterwards we are still going to go back to table, why don't we go back to table? I'm not speaking for anybody. I've done my research and this is what I see. Everybody might change, everybody might cool down. Everybody has to go back to a status quo in the legal frame of the law. 
Then learn the law takes its place and there is civil order. The law and civil order will reconfigure the whole society. Because you call them mob, but they are also citizens, so they have equal rights with all of us. So I'm a Benwani. Because I want to feel like Benya don't but don't want to anybody. And you know the beauty of this thing, but my boys are not even they want to judge it. They had died at home before they came out on the street. So if you shoot them, it doesn't bother them. They are not bothered. What is signed? They have appended their signature. Even the most high God has seen it. So it is true God. And I don't know if I feel more money. Because I'm more one other people. So there has to be reform. So all government programs must be targeted at the mob and the masses to stop this kind of carnage and violence. If not, it will continue. You will kill the number of people they will kill, that you will kill you back. So we don't want that anymore. This is Lagos. Lagos is going to be peaceful. We are host to everybody. And the Oba has been nice and friendly to everybody. So leave the white cap chiefs to handle the Oba of Lagos. The chiefs own the Oba of Lagos, and the Oba of Lagos owns the chief. But please, if anybody is aggrieved, especially the guy, Buwato Bokba Ashe, Lossi Palace, Chief Ashobon of Lagos, Lord Dasta for Fofisi Yekpada, Kode Benwon, On Babo Loye Wawon Monkoton Mashe. So let's start with the harbor first, to the white cap chiefs of Lagos. Because they stabilize politicians, they're always there. Politicians will use four years and they're out. But the white cap chiefs are always there. It's hereditary. Politicians will come and go, but the white caps are there. Thank you very much. Thank you. We sure hope you enjoyed this video. For more entertaining video content such as behind the scenes of music videos and movies, music concerts, premieres, interviews and exclusive gists, subscribe now to our YouTube channel Goldmine TV and be unleashed into a world of super excitement.